Good afternoon. Uh, this course is EC352. It is for undergraduate course in engineering, electronics and electrical engineering mainly. Digital signal processing is one of the most vibrant area of electronics and communication engineering. Nowadays, whatever kind of devices we are having, that is what like the mobile phone or smart devices like LEDs, TVs or new kind of laptops, desktops or any other kind of portable mobile device which can transfer some information, which can receive some information for user benefits. All are based on digital signal processing applications. Digital signal processing is a wide area, very very popular, very very useful in nowadays. The most important part about this is what every information is processed in the form of digital pattern. So I will start today from introduction part of DSP, the difference between analog versus digital and what is exactly distributed representation of signals. After that I would like to take LTA systems, introduction to linear time invariant systems. What are the systems? What are these properties? Linear time invariant and then these characteristics of the systems. Means what? Static system versus dynamic systems, causal system versus non-causal system, linear system versus non-linear system, stable versus unstable system. Then there are many like shift variant, shift invariant systems, and many more classification is there for different kind of systems. Apart from that, we would like to take, we would like to discuss this particular important fundamental of digital signal processing, or I can say it's a very core fundamental of entire communication segment. That is what sampling or sampling theorem. Sampling is a way to convert analog signal into digital signal. So today we will take these things in one by one. As this is the first lecture for this course EC352, so students can maintain regular pattern and they can understand these all fundamentals in small time only. First of all, we should understand that what is the analog signal. Any signal like the pen rotating above or my voice signal or any video transmission signal, any continuous flow of information is analog. Analog is like the continuous flow. This can be temperature measurement, it can be some air pressure, it can be speed of wire, speed of tire, speed of anything. If we are representing information with respect to one variable, and suppose that is time for our case and this waveform represents a variation in the parameter or value of that particular signal signal means what? the information in this DSP in general any information we will use a variable signal for that so this information or I can say this signal can represent temperature for example it can represent some kind of audio, it can represent some kind of video signal, it can represent any kind of information in a graphical manner. For understanding purpose, we are taking one reference time. It means what with respect to time, what are the variations this signal can be represented in this waveform format. This waveform is randomly taken, but you see, at every instant of time, if this is the starting point, we are having a continuous flow of information. No single point is like that, there we do not have information. For example, for this x1 point, we have p1 value. For some x2 point, we have p2 value. And similarly, as long as we are in, we are measuring this quantity, we have some parameter, some value for that. So this this kind of presentation is for continuous information, and and this kind of continuous flow of information is known as an analog information. Technically, or we can classify in we can classify it as an analog signal. And normally, whatever information or signals are there in the real world, all are analog signal. So, analog signal like our audio voice or our wind flow, temperature variation, or anything else. Whatever parameter you want, you can change in surroundings is analog in nature. We can process these kind of information. For example audio signal. We can process audio signal as per the requirement. Suppose audio is not clear or its frequency is very high. Somehow using nowadays technology, we can apply these audio signal to the 
latest technology system and can get desired output. If we are processing analog signal in some system, all I can say, if we are using a system which can process a continuous signal or analog signal, then this is called analog processing. The output will be analog, input is analog. So system transfer function is also a continuous function of the reference value and it is called analog processing. Processing is nothing. If suppose the audio signal is there and we want to scale it up or we want to change its frequency or we want to filter out particular frequency content from its spectrum. All these kind of mathematical operations are known as a processing. Any mathematical or algorithm level processing operation we can consider under processing. All these kind of activities are done under this segment and this segment we can define as a system. A system can be anything like this a very layman language I can say this marker is a system where ink is a input and output is this language black board. I can say again that uh, a mobile phone is a system where we are getting signal from sound waves from one side and we are getting output sound from other side. So this part is a system where we are processing information and that side is output so I can mark it output a standard way to write and this side is the input to write these things. So input side of system normally taken on the left hand side, output side is normally taken on the right hand side and this is the part where we are getting output. As it is an analog signal processing, so this entire process or signal or segment is known as a analog signal processing. So now it is clear that what is analog signal and processing. Signal is nothing but it's a general term for any kind of information. Now this information currently I am talking about a continuous information so I am calling it analog signal. But the same thing can be what discrete or digitized as well. We will take it later. So the first part is analog signal. The problem with analog signal is what the processing is complex. The processing at real time speed is tough and difficult. Once it is complex so it is costlier. Costlier so it is not easy to implement on hardware. The alternate solution nowadays we have and that is what uh, digital signal processing. We will convert the analog signal into different format which is not as a digital or digitized format and the same format or information in digitized format will be processed somewhere here and we will get an output and that output will be converted back to analog form before real world application. So, I can say that for digital signal processing we have analog input information or signal we will use some kind of filters to filter out unwanted noise out of that signal we, will, we can use sample and hold circuit to sample the input information to get the sample from that input information which is continuous in nature that sample information can be converted to digital format using digital to analog converter DAC digital to analog converter that information will be processed in this processor means what? any kind of mathematical algo whatever kind of application or requirement is there we can apply it. All these things will be processed in this segment. The output of this will be digital in nature. So, we need to convert that uh, information which is digital in nature to analog before we can apply it to real world. So, we need here digital, I'm sorry, it should be analog to digital converter. I'm sorry. Here, the digital part should be converted back to analog. So, analog information was converted into digital this side, digital information will be converted to analog this side. So, DAC part is here, DAC will convert information into analog, that analog information we will use a restructure, reconstruction filter here. Reconstruction filter. 
so that if we have any high frequency noise component in that converted signal can be removed, can be filtered out here and the final output is here and that is what uh, a audio or analog or uh, whatever kind of information, analog format of information will be available at this point. This entire block diagram represents nothing but a digital signal processing line. So, we need to understand here that what is a sample and gold circuit, what is, how can we convert things in from analog to digital part and process a DAC reconstruction filter. The study of all these blocks in detail is actually nothing but DSP. If you understand these things, these parts, you can apply any kind of articulation on any signal. So basically in this course we will be learning these all blocks only in detail in terms of application. So this waveform was for analog. Now I will show you waveform for digitized signal. You see here, it suppose this was the waveform for continuous signal. On another hand, if I have a train of pulses, all these signal arrows, this is one pulse. We have a train of pulses. It means what? At this moment, we have some value of signal. This can be anything. The magnitude is, suppose it is 1. It can be 2, 4, 9, 5, 20, 100, 1000, whatever. I am taking it as a 1. So magnitude of this signal at this time instant is 1. Here it is 2. Here it is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Like that and so on. So the main point is what? The magnitude is 1 and the sample instant are like this. Suppose this is our one impulse train. As you know that what is impulse. So I will call it a impulse train. And this is your some signal. If you will convert these two signals, or in simple word, direct language, if you will multiply these two signals, what you will get? You will get a sampled version of input information. This is your input info information that is impulse frame. So when you will multiply, what will happen? You, there will be combination between the respective position. Suppose the position 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 is here. So the value which is available at 0 position will be multiplied with the value available at 0 position here. The value which is available at 4th position will be multiplied with the value or sample available at 4th. If suppose there is nothing between 3 to 4 in this case, it means what? You see here, between 3 to 4 there is nothing. It means 0 value. So it is like that, you are multiplying 0 with the value which is here between 3 to 4. So 0 into something is nothing. Is actually 0. So the resultant of these two signals operation will be somewhat, here at 0 it is 0 like only, at 1 it is somewhat uh, 1. You see here at 2, at 3, now at 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and so on. You, have, you see there is the variable, mag variable magnitude of these waveforms. The variable magnitude is why? Because for, uh, for example, for this position, the magnitude was, suppose it is 2. Here it is at 1, it is 1. Here it is at 1 point or suppose 0.5 only. Now this side you have everywhere it is 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 only. So basically what we are doing, we are multiplying these things with 1 at respective positions. So at 1 you will get 1, at 2 you will get 2, at 3 you will get 0.5 and this side you will get unity value because the magnitude was in lower side, amplitude was in lower side. So this is the way, if, if, this is the basic understanding that if you will multiply one continuous signal with a discrete, discrete, it is important word discrete, see which is not continuous that is discrete, you see here there is nothing in between these samples, so it is discrete, so non-continuous values can be called, can be taken as a discrete signal, so this is a type of discrete signal, so discrete signal is multiplied with this continuous signal will result in this kind of signal waveforms. Depending on the number of samples and the length of the input signal, the length will be for this signal. 
means what? The size and length of this signal depends on the property of input as well as input strength. And this process is somehow called initial part of sampling theorem. So you see, if we can multiply a signal with an impulse trend, we can convert it into discrete form. Now we can assign some codes to every position. Means what? Quantization. We can assign some specific value to these positions. Like, suppose if it is for me, if it is 0, 0, 0. For just for example, at random I am taking, I am assigning the first magnitude 1 as a 0, 0, 0, magnitude 2 as a 0, 0, 1, magnitude 0 0.5 as a 0, 1, 0, and so on. So what I will have? I have a fixed number of magnitude here. I have a fixed number of magnitude here. So every magnitude like 1 will be replaced with 0, 0, 0, 2 will be replaced with 0, 0, 1, uh, 3 will be replaced with 0, 1, 0, and so on. 0 0.5, I'm sorry, it's 0 0.5. So 0.5 will be replaced with 0, 1, 0. This side is what? Representation is only in terms of 0 and 1. And that is what? Binary format. So binary format, this is the, your normal decimal number system, fractional number system. So we can represent or we can reconvert, we can convert entire information into binary format. Now once it is in binary, one zero one zero format, we can say it is digital. So digital means what? We have only two levels of information. Where we have either zero or either one. You see this waveform. Where this part represents magnitude 1, this part represents 0. This is 1 again, this is 0. This is 1 again, that is 0. So this part is nothing but, this waveform is nothing but a digitalized waveform. So we have only two, uh, two level of energy, two level of, uh, you can say the magnitude, 1 and 0. So this is digital. This is continuous and that one is discrete. This one is discrete. So, once we are converting analog signal into discrete form and then finally into digital and after that if we are performing some operation as per the requirement that part will be called or that processing will be known as a digital signal processing so uh, this was all about uh, what is basically analog and what is uh, digital signal uh, to convert analog into digital signal we need sampling process uh, that is a core fundamental of entire communication theory. Before sampling, I would like to take, I would like to define few important terminology of digital signal processing. Or at a very basic level, I can say the terminology of signal and system segment. I believe now it is clear that what is signal. Now the second thing is what is system. System, whenever I will use system, it means for any system, any device, any thing which can accept input, can do some processing, can generate output. Like for example, mobile. It can be TV, it can be a remote control, it can be your automobile, it can be anything which can accept some input and can generate some modified output. Sometimes even without modification, if output is coming, we can say it's a system. Particular unique kind of. So this side is normally taken as the input side, that is the output side. System can be anything. And to represent system property, we use a transfer function. Transfer function. A standard way to represent the property of or characteristics of a system. Transfer function is a mathematical way to represent the characteristics of any system, a way to define its characteristics. And that is nothing but output upon input. So transfer function is nothing but output upon input. So this is for system. Now for analog signal, the way to write a signal is like x of t, where t is nothing but time reference x is a function of time, it can be anything, x is a general variable term, it can be y, it can be z, it can be whatever you want. So x is a signal, t is a time. Similarly, in discrete format, the same information will be written in a square bracket and with small n. This small n is nothing but, again it is about time to reference only, but this is what a specific position or sample 
position. Like if it is zero, it is n. Then it is zero, one, two, three, four, five. It is not continuous. So you have some value at this position. You have value at this position. You again have values at this position. But you see here, there is nothing in between these 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 position. So it is a discrete reference point n. It's a standard syntax in DSP everywhere. N means spotted for discrete domain. So I am writing the x of n is my x n. My x is a function of discrete time. Here, whereas in this case, my x is a function of time, which is a t, which is a continuous sig signal, and this can be like an ECG signal, I think. So t, this is the way to write x t, x n. Now, both of these signals are nothing but time domain representation. This is continuous time. That is discrete time. What I mean to say time domain? It means what signal is represented in time domain segment only. In in communication, we can represent signal as various with respect to various references. My current reference is time. Means what? At nine o'clock, this is the value of signal. At nine point one, this is the value of signal. Nine point one. At ten o'clock, the signal value is something like this. Whereas in this case, the signal nine, ten, eleven, twelve, discrete, non-continuous, but but reference is time only. We can represent the same thing in frequency domain. For continuous time signal, it will be written like as this is continuous frequency. Whereas this side we can represent signal like as omega. This is digital frequency. And as you see in frequency domain, in frequency domain, the signal syntax is capital. Whereas in time domain, it is in small. The basic fundamental level. So you know what is an error, what is system, what is signal. You understand what is digital, what is discrete, and what is transfer function. We have some other standard blocks to design or to draw the block diagram of any system, like the electrical uh, system of this room, appliances. We have a fan, we have a tube light, we have a switch there. So we can design a model for this system, and that model can be represented with block diagrams, blocks. So in DSP we have specific standard blocks, like we have a block for addition, we have block for multiplication, we have block for uh, scaling, and many more. So for addition, if one signal is coming from this direction, it is x of n. DSP, digital signal processing, is all about discrete representation of information. So I will always use n only in this subject. Plus, and I may have one more signal from that side, and that is y of n, and this may be my output z of n. So addition of x n plus y n is this. This is a standard error block. Similarly, very simple thing. Similarly, we may have a multiplication block. One signal from this side, one signal from that side. Multiplication x of n. By of n multiplied by that z of n. Or we have scaling parameter to represent scaling. We can use it. Factor a input x n output y n. So y n is equal to a x n. Scalar a can be half, a can be two. You can half some signal, you can double it up. So this parameter, this triangle is for scaling. So multiplication, addition, we can have for if you will write minus a, it is for subtraction. Scaling and many more. So these are the basic building blocks using which we can represent any system via block diagram. We can also represent system via reference equation, and we can also represent system just by mathematical model. So we know that systems are anything which can process inform input information can generate some kind of output. I would be more specific now. Whenever I would say system, it means what? Only about digital processor. It can be wireless or television or mobile kind of things. So it is now about only for electronic segment. The same encoding processing which is ongoing here. Uh, information from this side is coming, and uh, later we can process this information. We means some kind of editing on this shooting can be done. So this is what nothing but uh, kind of processing only. So. Now the system capability and capacities may be different. We can classify systems under several categories as per their capacity, capability, application, and many more parameters. 
In general, as per the subject requirement, the most important classification is what causal, non-causal category. Apart from that, linearity test, or I can say linear, non-linear system, static versus dynamic system. I would take causal and non-causal system. First of all, Suppose some equation I am writing here y of n equal to x of n plus 1 plus x of n We need to find out whether this system is causal or non-causal n is nothing but a time instant n plus 1 is a shifted value x n is a as it is value in normal syntax x is taken as an input, y is taken as an output. So in any equation, if you are finding y and x and nothing is written, you take it as an input-output relationship. So this is the output side, which is normally written in standard variable, right hand side and left hand side, you will find all these things, xn plus 1 plus xn something. So xn plus 1 is a shifted version of x of n. If suppose we have a signal x of n, like, if suppose we have a signal like, this is your x of n, 0, 1, 2, 3, magnitude is not 1. Then we can write x of minus n or we can draw the graph for x of minus n as this is 0, that side it is 1, 2, something. This is minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4 and so on. The same graph I'm getting, here is minus 1, minus 2. The variable reference is n here, it is n minus n, this side is plus n. This is zero position. Okay. So here this one is what x of n, it is x of n. So for x of minus n is nothing but the mirror image of the signal. So here in this case we have symbol on this side of zero axis. So mirror image will be on that side. So you can see that if I will draw the mirror image of this signal with same magnitude, it will look like somewhat like this. So this is x of minus n, it is a mirror image of the signal. Second thing, if I want to scatter like twice of x of n, here it is 1, the twice of x of n will be, position will be same only, but their magnitude is now double. We can make it half as well depends on the parameter of scaling or factor of scaling. This operation is scaling, that operation is folding. Simply you can call it folding or mirror image. This is nothing but scaling. Similarly, we can have shifting operation, which is actually there in the signal. The purpose of all these is this to explain this part only. So shifting is nothing but to shift the value of signal either that side of spectrum or this side of spectrum. You see here, as I said earlier, this is nothing but the time variable axis up to infinity this side, that side. Suppose it is a zero position. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this side, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, that side. If I want to shift it that side, means what right hand side. Current starting position is at 1. Here there is nothing, no value. It is 1, it is starting from 1 to 3. I want to shift this sample one time that side. So then it will look like somewhat like this. So it is one time shifted towards the right side. Or I can say it is delayed towards that. Why delayed? If this is 9 o'clock, this will be 10 o'clock, 11, 12, 13, 14, like that. So the time, which is future time, will be on that side. I mean to say, something which was happening at 9 o'clock, now it will happen at 10 or 11 o'clock. So it is delayed version of the same signal. 
This graphical representation is nothing but it just says that at what time is can a particular signal will occur or particular information will change its value. The same thing can be pre-formed or can be advanced. If suppose something which is supposed to be a, at 9 o'clock, now it is happening at 8 o'clock or 7 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 5 o'clock. Or one time shifting towards this side, this side will make it something different. So this is what right hand shifting. One time, I will erase it now. This is one time right hand shifting. I can represent these things as this is nothing but x of n minus k, where k is a shifting parameter and the value of k is 1. Right hand shifting. The same signal can be shifted towards left. This is the original position. Now if I would shift it one more time towards this side, what will happen? This sample will come here, this will come here, that will come here. And finally it will look like we have nothing at position 3 and we have one value at 0. If we will shift one more time, it will look like that we have one more sample at 1 and we do not have anything at this position. So it is what we have a value here at minus 1, 0 and 1 and this is the original signal shifted twice towards the left side or advanced towards left. Okay? We can represent the same thing in terms of equation as x n plus k x n plus k k is a shifting variable the value by which we are shifting the signal. So now this time we are doing it for left hand side. So we are shifting it twice. So k is equal to Two. But you see here, we are moving towards the left side, so it's a standard sentence because we are counting it as a minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. So this k is equal to minus 2. So whenever k is my negative value, it means what we are shifting towards the side of graph. Whenever k is a positive value, it means what we are shifting towards right hand side. Okay? So I can write it standardly here. If any signal is given as n plus k. Better I can write x n of minus k. Now you see the value of k can be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and thing. So if I am shifting it one time that side, and k equal to plus 1, it means what? I can write it here x of n minus k equal to plus 1. So it is here, and overall it will become x of n minus 1. Or if k equal to plus 2, then I will write here x of n minus plus 2, so it will become x of n minus 2. So these two equations represent nothing but right hand side shifting operation. The similar thing can be written, can be presented for left hand side. So I can write here x of now if I am shifting towards this side of graph where there was 0, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 so I am shifting this side so I will, I will take it as negative 1, 2, 3 if I am shifting continued by one position I will take it as a minus 1 shift value of k if I am shifting the content or signal by 2 position I would consider it as a minus 2 so in the same signal now k can be minus 1 then the value will be x and plus 1 if k equal to x and minus of 2, it will be x and plus 2. So now you see, this is clear that what does it mean if I am writing x and plus 1? It is nothing but, it is nothing but, original action is there but one time it is shifted towards left side. If it is plus 1. If it is minus 1, it means what? It is shifted towards right hand side. Okay. So this equation is given here. Equation is given here. This equation. This equation represents some random system. Any system. Where y is the output and it depends on input in such a manner that relationship is like this. Means what output is the addition of two signal. One is a normal accent which is input and other one is accent plus shifted version of input. This internal mechanism of that system is somewhat like this. If you are applying x and this side, at output you are getting x and 
plus x and plus y. Some internal circuit mechanism is somehow like that, so we are getting an output like this. So this equation means nothing but the system is there. Now the question is that to test whether this system is causal or non causal. The causal systems, the causal systems are nothing but those systems which depends only on past and present inputs. The causal systems are those systems which depends only on present and past inputs. What remains? Future inputs. In signal processing, it is possible to consider future inputs. Future input means what? Those inputs which will come in future to the system. Imaginary thing. So, uh, causal system does not depend on future system. The question lies in that. Is it possible? Is there any system which can accept the future input? Yes, it is possible. As long as in, we are talking in simulation environment, and in certain condition it is possible. At, at general, at, specific, at, at normal, at your level, we can say it is not possible to have a system which will accept future input and will give some Future is not which is not happened yet. So to design a system which is accepting or which will perform as per the future input is not possible. At any simple data language. In later stage of this subject, I would, I would explain that how can we how can we manage the same thing in simulation environment? Currently, you consider that any system which depends on past and present inputs or the present and past values of input is causal system. Okay? So, X is an input, Y is an output. The equation given is here. So, to test whether the system is causal or non causal, we need to check whether it is depending on the present and past input. So I will write here n equal to 0. Let us put some value n equal to 0 in this equation. This equation will become y0 equal to x of 1 plus x of 0. The present value of output is y of 0. So we are talking about y of 0 position. So the input with respect to y of 0 is x of 0. Here you have x of 1. x of 1 is what? Go back to the graph, you see here, you have 1 here, 2 here, 3 here, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, this side. So 1 is here. You are standing at this position, this value is here. So that is future value. So you see that y of 0 is depending on x of 1 and x of 0, addition of that. x of 1 is what? Future value. x of 1 is a future value for y of 0. So this system is non-causal in this way. You take another value of n and that is what you take 1, it will become y of 1 is equal to x of 2 plus x of 1. Again this y of 1 is depending on x of 2. So it is non-causal. So it's enough. Once a system for a particular condition is non-causal, it is non-causal for all values. Okay? What is the problem here that sometimes it is possible that if you are checking for a particular value like suppose for 0, and suppose your system is not indicating non-causality and you may decide that okay, because for zero value it is not non-causal, it is a causal. So overall system is causal. I mean to say that you may get confused at certain values. So you always test for at least four or five values. Sometimes it is possible for one or two small values, it may not represent its complete, it may not indicate its complete characteristics. So go for three, four tests. So like I am for I am checking for zero, I am checking for one. I may take check it for two, three. But luckily in this case, at first value itself, we are finding that it is a non-causal, so it is non-causal. I will take another example where the case will be actually different. So this system is a non-causal system because it is depending on future values. If suppose the system is like x of n equal to minus of n. Now this one is interesting. A popular problem you will find many times in competitive exams as well. Very simple problem. X of n equal to uh, y of n equal to x of minus n. Take n equal to 0. Y of 0 is equal to x of 0. Alright? Causal. You take n equal to 1. Y of 1 is depending on x of minus 1. Current value is 1. Input is minus 1. So input is depending. The next is what current value of output is depending on the previous value of input, past value of input. 
So as long as the output is depending on the past value of input, system is clausal. System is clausal for y of 1. We can check it for y of 2, it will become y of minus 2. Sorry, x of minus 2. So again, system is clausal. No issue. So as long as up to this point everything is alright. Check it for n equal to minus 1. For n equal to minus 1, this equation will become y of minus 1 equal to x of so that is nothing but x of 1. Now you see the current output is about y of minus 1 position and the input is x of 1. For minus 1 position, 1 position plus 1 position is future value. You test any positive value of n or zero value of n, you would consider this system as a causal. But as you would consider you would take a negative value of signal, you would find that this system is actually non-causal. So if I'm not you, you are not checking it for negative value, your overall system may become non-causal. And you, you may make you may make a mistake here that the system is causal. So you always test for some, so test it for zero, test for some positive value, test for some negative value. So this is the way you can decide the system is causal or non-causal. This system is a non-causal system. Whereas the last one was causal system. I will repeat, causal systems are those systems which depends on the present and past values of input only. Non-causal systems are those systems which depends on future values of input. Like in many cases you will find you are supposed to solve few more problems. I will tell you, I will define linearity and then I will, I will close it for today. So linearity is a very important property of, of systems. Those systems which follow superposition theorem are called linear systems. The system is there, suppose output is y of n, input is x of n. As for the superposition theorem, if suppose I'm, I have two input variable signals, I'm going to say that at one go I can apply x1, at the other time I can apply x2, two different signals or two different values of input signal. So as for the superposition theorem, if a system behave as per the certain specific characteristics, like if I would apply x1 in first time, I would get y1 n. Later, I will apply x2n, I will get y2n as an output. So, I will write it here. For x1n input, the output will be y1n. For x2n input, the output will be y2n. Suppose I am adding these two equations. Simple addition will make it x1n plus x2n is equal to y1n plus y2n. Simple addition. This is case 1. In case 2, what I am doing, instead of applying separate signals, I would add these two signals and simultaneously I will apply to the system. So what I would apply now, I would apply x1n plus x2n, instead of x1 and x2, separately. So I am applying x1n plus x2n. So in this case, if I am giving some output, And that can be, I can represent y double h n. Suppose in second case, I am getting output as a y double h n. In the first case, I am getting output as a y n plus y n. Now, as for the superposition theorem, if y double dash n is equal to y1 n plus y2 n, then system is linear. Then system is linear. Okay. So to check the linearity, we need to check this property of superposition theorem. Any signal, you can have three signals and number of signals. You can have ten input signal. The, the relation must stay true for a, any number of inputs. So we have x1 and x2 and you apply x1 and you will get something. You apply x2 and you will get something. Then you add up these two signals, apply together, you are getting something. If this output is the equal to the previous added value, then your system is linear. I will take a simple comparison to this. Make things easy for you. 
goes systematically. First case one, case two. Suppose uh, I have an equation of uh, system which is equal to y of n equal to x of n plus uh, x of n plus two and plus one. At case one, I am applying first input. Suppose I have two inputs, I am applying this input. So equation will become this equation will become y of n equal to x1 n wherever x is written I am just writing an x1 so that it means when I am applying first input in the case 2 I have another input which is actually x2 n it can be n so it is y2 n <coughs> so it is y2 n so y2 n is equal to x2 n plus x2 n plus 1 plus 1 Third step, third step of first case is what to add these values. So you will get y1 n plus y2 n this side is equal to this side. If you will add, you will get x1 n plus x2 n plus x1 n plus 1 plus x2 n plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. So this is the equation we are getting in case 1. Of super version theorem. Now the case two. Second step. What we will do this time? We will add these two signals. Input signal will apply simultaneously to this system. Means what? Wherever there is written x n, I would replace it with x one plus x two. This side x one n plus one plus x one n plus one x something. So y in for case two. The right hand side, uh, y side, I would write uh, like uh, y double addition to just to differentiate it with uh, previous case. On this side, I would write uh, x one n plus x two n for the first position, for this position. For second position, again I would write n plus one plus x two n plus one. So it will become plus one. So the first case is what here x1 n plus 1 plus x2 n plus 1 and finally it is here plus 1 only. It is plus 1. So this is the second step. This was the first step output. Now compare this y relation with this side. Means what? If these two are equal, then system is linear. So compare the other side. X1 n plus x2 n plus x1 n plus 1 plus x2 n plus 1 plus 1. This side you have x1 n plus x2 n plus x1 n plus 1 plus x2 n plus 1 plus 2. This 2, this 1 is the difference between these two equations. System is non linear. Is it clear? System is non linear because the final equations are not equal. Let it be there. Just take a second example. In this case, if I am removing this 1 from everywhere, what will happen? I will get this result. Now compare. This side is equal to that side. System is linear. Because of that extra constant value here, the system is becoming non-linear. So you see, whenever there is an extra constant in an equation with anywhere in a system equation, it will make it non-linear. If it is not there, the equation is generalized that it is linear system. This one is linear system. If it is plus one there, then it is non-linear system. I hope it is clear to you enough for today and uh, I will take uh, different properties of systems and sampling in coming class.